Okay, praise the Lord. Getting Facebook set up here. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Our mic here says on the air, so uh, the picture's not moving on the Facebook chat, but um, we hope comments will start coming in here just shortly. Praise the Lord. What a great evening for uh, studying the word of God. What a great evening for looking at the scriptures. What a great evening for pursuing what I call the definition of revelation is the unveiling of the father's heart. And he wants his heart unveiled to us so that we can have a full understanding of who he is, what he thinks about us so that we can begin to see ourselves the way he sees us and think the way he Thanks. Praise the Lord. Good to see Melody Krischer uh, joining us tonight, and I'm sure many, many others will be coming on board shortly. My guest tonight is Pastor Rory Sinegram, who jumped in here just today uh, to uh, help me out uh, as we're getting things rolling once again in our new location. Uh, he is a man that's called by God to be an instrument of healing the brokenhearted and to be a voice of freedom to those who are bound. And how many knows there are people that we've met in our lives who seem to be all bound up, all tore up by religion and need to be set free by truth. Jesus said, you'll know truth and truth will make you free. Uh, Pastor Roy graduated from St. Cloud State University in the spring of 1994. That fall, he attended Rhema Bible Training Center. I've been there several times myself, not as a student, but as a hearing Dr. Hagen minister. After graduating, graduating Rhema uh, in 1996, Pastor Roy established the evangelistic ministry of Roy Sinegram Ministries International. Here comes my favorite part uh, from here to the end, holding evangelistic meetings and conferences throughout Southern Minnesota and Northern Iowa. In his ministry, Pastor Roy has seen thousands successfully seen thousands of people receive salvation and has experienced medically confirmed healings those are some of the best kind although we don't need a doctor to confirm it when we have dr jesus who confirms it but it's good for man to see that man can still be touched by a power higher than themselves you can find out more about his ministry at www.rsmifreedom.org and i'll try to get that in the chat room here shortly. Pastor Roy, welcome back to Kingdom Dynamics tonight. Thank you so much for agreeing to be on the show. And would you just please take your, uh, a few minutes and just greet our viewing audience and just tell us what God's doing in your life and ministry, brother. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Dr. Bill. Once again, it's always such a privilege to be here with you and to minister alongside you. Um, I, I really just uh, value these times. That's very precious. We just have a a, a, you know, a brotherly type spirit. And it's just it always is profitable uh, to those Amen. that have been a part of these programs and these broadcasts. And I, I just, I love to see the spirit of God move right now. There are just so many things going on in, in the realm of the spirit and, and with the body of Christ. I mean, we are, we live in exciting times, don't we? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm telling you, um, I, I'm excited to see what God is doing. I'm encouraged. Glory to God. He just keeps strengthening us no matter what challenges we face. And I know that you faced uh, some awesome challenges here recently, Dr. Bill, but glory to God. He is also faithful to just co to continue to lead us through these things. I mean, we can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil. Praise God. Yeah. So our church is just booming. We're excited about that. Uh, we, we meet uh, right here in Austin, Minnesota. Uh, Freedom Christian Fellowship. We're located at 1110 24th Avenue. Southwest. I am so encouraged to see the fruit that is taking place in the lives of those that we're, we have the opportunity to minister to. We're seeing healings. We're, we're seeing salvations. We're seeing God sure. just pour out his love and touching people's hearts. And, and uh, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing wealth transfer take place. I mean, literal wealth transfer that we've heard about. Hallelujah. And it's manifesting. And we're excited about that. We've seen people walk away from years. I mean, we have one gentleman and his family uh, that, that he's walked away from 30 plus years of drug addiction and drug mm. dealing and crime and it's just serving the Lord. He's on fire. Glory to God. And uh, we're just excited about these things. I tell you something, it pays to be a part of a church family where the word of God is being sown and lives are being transformed. I'm telling you, mm. you want to find that right place. So I, I praise God for, for the call that he's placed on our life and, uh, mm -hmm. to be able to, to do that. And uh, then we're also doing healing schools on Monday nights and those are more like healing revival services, Dr. 
Dr. Bill, but we're teaching the, the divine principles of, of, of God uh, and how to receive healing for your body. Hallelujah. And uh, we're seeing great things take place there. So this is mm -hmm. a good time. This is a good time to be in the, in the church and in the family of God. Amen. You know, you can hand an individual a hundred dollar bill, but the thing they have to do in response to that is to reach out and receive it. Yes. And so although God has played, given us many things through the finished work of Jesus, we still have to receive or accept or embrace what he's done for us. We have to take it as our own. And uh, so uh, so many people are joining us tonight already, and we haven't even hardly got started. Now, let me announce real quickly, and I'm assuming you have meet a meeting tonight yet at uh, in an hour. Yeah, at around seven, seven o'clock. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll get out of here in time. So let, let me just say real quickly that tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, I will be starting up uh, my Friday morning conversations with Dr. Bill again. We're slowly, gradually getting back into the flow of things. We are so not unpacked yet. Uh, we barely scratched the surface, but uh, we're, we're getting there. So um, uh, we, so in the, at, in the morning at 10 a.m., Pastor Kyle Butler will be joining for me for the next three weeks or so. Uh, we're going to be talking uh, about uh, mixing uh, the dangers of mixing law and grace. And uh, the title is more elaborate than that, I think. So you can look on my timeline. Uh, but then after that, uh, the, the following broadcast is Pastor Rory and I are going to be doing healing school, online healing school. One of the things I'd like for us to address in healing school, maybe on the first session, Pastor Rory, is because we'll be a little uh, less pressed for time there. But one of the things is how is it when God speaks to you or speaks to me or anybody else watching a word of knowledge? How do we know that's really God? And when we're conveying that to another person, we're saying, okay, someone here and your name is John or, or not their name. And you have a, a bone spur or you have a, a just been diagnosed with cancer in your liver. How do they know that? other than one person's hearing us say that. So we might address uh, just briefly how word and knowledge and healing kind of flow together. But mm -hmm. tonight we're talking about something a little bit different. And I just asked Pastor Roy today, I said, you know, what's on your heart? And uh, he quoted a scripture to me uh, from Romans eight, ver uh, 5, verse 8. And I'm reading from the New King James. And it says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, the King James says God commanded his own love toward us. Now, so we're going to talk tonight about God commanded his love towards you. This is a message tonight that's not only for our benefit, for our re-edification, for our reaffirming, our, our just building up the solid foundation that we're on. But this message is for the world tonight. So yeah. everybody that hears this during this live broadcast, and if you click like and you click share, this is kind of like television, how they get TV ratings, ratings that you got to watch, and they have some system that monitors that. But on the Internet, what I call Internet television, you've actually got to click and share for us to get a rating out of that. So we want you to do that. Don't think of it as a rating. Think of it as that you're taking the gospel and sharing it with someone else. It's going to share it with someone else and someone else until this message reaches the world. It reaches hundreds and thousands of people. So tonight, mm -hmm. Pastor Roy, uh, as we look at this, um, one of the things that I did just to kick this off, I went back to Romans chapter one to find out who the apostle Paul was addressing. And it, it says in Romans one, verse seven, to all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, or literally, if you take the italicized words out, he says they're called saints. The New Living Translation says, I'm writing to all of you in Rome who are loved by God and are called to be his own holy people. So is it true, Pastor Roy, that God's view of people is often not how they see themselves? Oh, that's that is for sure. And that's that's the issue with sin in the world today. It clouds our it blinds us. It clouds our perceptions. It distorts our perceptions, uh, not only of God and who he is, but uh, uh, of ourselves as well. And that's, as you know, one of the one of the issues, one of the main issues that we run up against as ministers of the gospel, uh, finding out how people perceive themselves and how they perceive God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. And, you know, I'm not a fan of uh, messing up. 
Okay, let's just use a traffic example. We have uh, we have traffic laws, we have stop signs, we have red lights and green lights, and we have yield and all of these things. We have railroad crossing, and even when the rails go down and you hear the ding, 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 that's a good sign that you're not to cross that. But you know, some people break those laws. Okay, you can break those laws and the grace of God says, I love you. I forgive you. I'm there for you. But the reality is there is a danger in breaking those laws. And so, you know, I thank God that he loves us and he's given this re us this revelation of love that says, you know what? Uh, I, as I was telling you today, a story that I'll not tell online, but I, I actually heard somebody tell me about something going on in their life that was very unfavorable in my opinion. I could have pounced on that individual and told them all kinds of bad things about themselves and quoted some old covenant situations and really tried to condemn them. But I just reaffirmed to them how much God unconditionally loves them, even right where they're at. And I know that's not old, that's against old school, uh, how we were brought up, but it's true. How can you undo what Jesus did in his finished work? How is that possible? Amen. Amen. Yeah. You see, even, you know, religion has really skewed our perception of who God the Father is. All throughout the Bible, we see God uh, continually demonstrate his unconditional, and I'm going to say that word again, unconditional mm -hmm. uh, love to us. He communicates it to us. He demonstrates it to us. And one of the, one of the most popular phrases you've probably heard is God loves you. And uh, unfortunately, people continue to interpret that through the filter of their own belief systems in their heart. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the Bible has been translated. And I say this, I guess I should say this very lightly, but the Bible has been translated into the English language. Glory to God. It helps us understand it. But there have been uh, some issues with that translation, obviously, because the Bible was not written in English. It was written in Hebrew. And in some of the Hebrew uh, text, you know, there's a lot more depth to uh, some of the things that have taken place in the history of man. And that, you know, and, and if you read it just strictly on the English translation, it looks like God's the one that's doing it. That he And he gets the black eye for it. So mm -hmm. some people say, well, if God is love and he loves me, then how can all these bad things be happening in the world? Uh, I, they believe that if the bad thing is happening, then God must be the one that authored it. And mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, that's something that we need to eradicate from the belief system, from the heart of individuals. No, no. Just because there's evil in the world does not mean that God authored it, that God wanted it, that God planned it, um, that God's going to get you for that. He's going to punish you. I mean, I was talking to a dear brother of mine, powerful evangelistic anointing, but he was talking about, you know, how God opened up the earth and swallowed these people. And I said, well, Let's take a look at that. Did God is God the one that opened up the earth and swallowed these people or was it sin that affected that whole nation of people and caused the earth to just have a hiccup <laughs> and open up and swallow them? The Bible says the wages of sin is death. It doesn't say that God is death. No, it says that God is love. In fact, in first John four, eight, it says that God is love. God is life. Uh, and in him, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So we have to address these issues and uh, begin to in order in order for us to really reach this world. We have to begin to show the uh, the, the right picture. We have to introduce the the the, the proper uh, father, um, exactly. the right God. Amen uh, to his children. And that's exactly what Jesus did. Didn't he, Dr. Bill, when he came mm -hmm. on this earth. He rocked the religious community because he demonstrated and communicated a merciful, loving father, not an angry, uh, distant God. You know, there's a perversion in the in the religious community that says if you preach love and you preach grace and you tell everybody that God's love is unconditional, then what we're saying is that God will love you no matter what. Well, yeah, that's exactly what we're saying. God will love you no matter what. But that doesn't mean that no matter what's are OK. You know, I gave an example yeah. recently uh, about how that we really should read our Bibles. We should fellowship with the Lord. We should uh, attend some sort of a worship meeting uh, where there's the preaching and expounding of the word, where there's fellowship in a body. Those are things we should do. Those are things that God's not going to hate us for our lack of participation in them, but they are things we should do. So are there what we call Christian uh, responsibilities? Of course there are. Things that God uh, tells us in his word that we ought to participate in. But we've got this skewed idea of God. And, and you're right. 
one of the things the English Bible has done for me is it's helped me to see that it's not so much what it says apart from the original language that's so uh, so distorted as much as it is how I perceive what's distorted. If I can't look past some words and think, okay, you know what? Thousands of years later, we have an English translation of the Bible, and but I still see the heart of my father that he loves me and he's not going to bring destruction and all of those things. So really it is, it's, it's religion that has taught us some really uh, a, a poor view of who our father is. Amen. You know, in the very, very beginning, we see how God created the universe and, and created all of creation. And one of the things that I have been ministering on in healing school was a topic called design for health. And we start out with how God created us by his word. He said, let us make man. He said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. But then we, we understood in that in that very same chapter, Genesis chapter one, that not only did God create us by his word, but he designed us to live by his word. And he said in, in, in uh, Genesis chapter one, verse 28, it said, and God blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and take dominion in the earth. And so here's the thing. You see this all throughout the scriptures. God would say something like this in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And he would say, listen, if you listen diligently to the voice of the Lord, your God, if you observe and obey and do my commandments, then these blessings will be taking place in your life. And he takes the whole realm of your and I existence. I mean, financially, physically, uh, in your, I mean, your family, your social life, the land, the whole earth will experience the blessing uh, of God through you when you when you just simply understand that you and I were designed to live by the word. But he said, if if you don't listen to what I'm saying, if you don't hear and believe the word that I'm saying, then all these bad things will be taking place. And so it sounds like to uh, the English reader that when you read that, God's the one that's doing this to you. And he's and he's being um, a big meanie. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and no, he was just warning us. It's kind of like as a as a as a father, when I was raising my children, I would say, look, at see these great, big, huge vehicles that are driving on the road here outside mm -hmm. of our house. OK, these guys are big. You're little. They can't see you. So don't run out into the street. We don't want you to get hit. And if that were to happen, if they were to to not heed my voice and run out into the street and, you know, a car uh, accidentally hit them and they be injured, you know, according to the world and according to religious, uh, some religious belief systems, mm -hmm. I would be the one that actually sent the car to hit my child to teach him a lesson. And that's the furthest thing from the truth. Yeah. The same is true yeah. with our father. He loves us unconditionally. And he's the one that warned us. Hey, listen, I, I designed this thing. I know how this thing operates. If you just listen to what I'm saying, heed my word, you will see the you will see the supernatural life that I have designed for you to live in and walk in. Glory to God. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, as the Apostle Paul is writing in uh, in Romans five to these these Jewish believers in Rome. Uh, they it became obvious to me that they did not have a proper view of God's love for them. And that's why Paul uh, begins to tell them that, hey, you are loved. You're called to be his own holy people. And and the thing about it was, is you and I understand you're talking about legalism, what religion would say, which would be a, a, a legalistic condemnation and the blame, the, the whole blame game system. But the Jewish nation was motivated by the law because that's how they they were raised up that was interjected in the, into them uh, I think it was from at five years old every Jewish uh, boy had to know the law uh, and and here's the thing about it the law was performance based so you've seen this before pastor if I perform well if I come to church on Christmas Sunday and Easter Sunday hey I feel good about myself I am justified but then you know what self-righteousness is like the Bible says it's as filthy rags only good to be thrown out and trodden under the foot of men the reality is is, is when I look at the performance of Jesus, that should change my whole, when I really get a revelation of that, that should change my whole perspective of the Father's heart for me, not that I had to jump through a bunch of hoops, uh, a bunch of red tape to actually uh, have the Father love me. Amen. And one of the things is that we don't want to come up against is, is saying, well, you can live an immoral lifestyle and just live any way you want. 
And, you know, you'll still have the blessing of God at work in your life. No, the Bible makes it very clear. Again, the wages of sin is death. Jeremiah, the prophet, even said in Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 25, he says, it's your own sin that blocks the blessing or your, that's hindering the provision that God so desperately wants you to have. In fact, if you read Isaiah, the prophet, chapter 43, this is, now listen, this is before Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood. I love this. In Isaiah chapter 43, this should be an eye-opening uh, word for some of you legalists out there, mm -hmm. that God looked at the children of Israel and said, your sin, your sin is wearing me out. It's frustrating me because he has such an intense desire for you to know him intimately and to know his love and to walk in the life that he designs you to live in, the, the supernatural, overcoming, dominating life of God, where you're well provided for, walking in health and enjoying life. He said, but your sin keeps hindering it. Your sin keeps keeps preventing it. So he goes, listen, in Isaiah 43, he says, I am blotting out your transgressions and I'm not remembering your sins any longer. Thank and he said, it, he, said it not, he said this not because of any good law that you're obeying or good work that you're doing, but because I'm doing it for my namesake, because I love you just mm -hmm. so that I can, just so that I can just come to you and be with you and to try to help you in this. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the, that's the, that's the spirit behind Jesus. God didn't send Jesus because of the law that we were obeying. God sent Jesus because we were, our own sins kept separating us from him. And that's what sin does it. It separates us from the father. It separates us from God. And God doesn't desire that because he loves us. And so he sent Jesus, glory to God, to pay the price for our sin, to become sin so that he could reconcile us back to himself. And it wouldn't be based on our on our good behavior, wouldn't be based on even what we believed. He just loved us that intensely that he sent Jesus to make sure that we could come back home and experience what he loves us with, experience his presence, his love. And that's the spirit of Romans chapter five, verse eight, isn't it, Dr. Bill? It says where God commanded his love to Think us. Look at that. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And that I looked up that word commandeth in the in the uh, um, the Greek. And that word commandeth uh, actually means this is amazing to place together, to set in the same place, to bring or band together, to stand with or near. Think about that. While you and I were still sinners, God placed us together with him. Oh, glory to God. He brought us and banded us together with him. How could he do that? Number one, because he is love. And number two, because Jesus paid the price so that we could do it. Glory to God. So listen, <laughs> that's the good news. If you're, if you're still trying to get to God through some work, through some effort, if you're still trying to please God through your behavior, you're tr if you're still trying to get God to do something in your life, you're missing the boat. You're still operating in sin. There's still an unbelief there in your heart. The truth of the matter is, is that he's already done it. He's already brought you and I home. He's already placed us together with Think him. Think about it. Glory to God. We, we have been reconciled. You know, you, you ask people, when did you get saved? And, you know, they'll, they might, sometimes the, the person that you know that has prayed a prayer of salvation and then been walking with the Lord for a while, well, they'll go back to that date, you know. Uh, you know, I accepted Jesus Christ June 19th, 2010. That's when I got saved. And I'll, I'll say, well, praise God, we'll celebrate that. But the truth of the matter is you and I were all saved. We were all reconciled Think about over 2,000 years ago, the day that Jesus Christ became sin with our sin died and God raised him up from the dead. That is when we were reconciled back to the father. You're just finally accepting it, believing it on June 19, 2010. Come on. Sure. Amen. And that's sure. the grace of our Lord and our, and our savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And you know what you're saying there, pastor is, is dangerous in, in religious Christianity circles because 
uh, to, to say that you picked out a date, but in reality, when Jesus paid the price for you uh, at Calvary, that was really the date. The Bible says that God was in Christ reconciling the world. I always say the whole world to himself. When did he do that? In Christ. And Christ. it's very interesting. I just uh, I want to mention this, that um, uh, a scripture uh, is uh, quoted in the chat room, John 1, 12. But as many as received him to them, gave he gave the power to become the children of God, even as many as of them that believed on his name uh, in John. Uh, Jesus uh, in Jesus's ministry, they're primarily dealing with Jewish congregations of people who didn't believe that Jesus was the son of God. So think about number one, who he's talking to, but there's a very interesting word here. And that's the word become the Bible says in John, uh, revelation chapter four, verse two, that, uh, John became in the spirit that that word actually in the Greek means he came to be. Uh, it, it's like it was an instant teleportation from one state of mind to another state of mind or one point of view to another point of view. And I can't help but believe that what G, you, you just brought up. I, I wish we really had time to jump on that now because you really brought up a very interesting point. And that's that what Jesus did. I, I believe this. You know, if if someone tries to label me as to what type of Christian I am. Uh, I don't know if there's a category for it, but I'm a finished works believer, plain and simple. I don't feel I, I feel like that's an all encompassing uh, thing that what Jesus did is finished. It can't be undone. If you discover what he did, here's the thing about it. It can't be undone. It is for all mankind. And now you might ask me, but how is God going to get people today from point A to point B? I can't answer that uh, because that's a case by case situation. Uh, I can tell you some of how he got me here and how that revelation came and my mindsets changed and my view of God changed. I can tell you that, but that may not be the same way that it's going to be for you. The reality is, is that God did something in Christ that is for your benefit. And that's why we're talking tonight that God commanded his uh, uh, getting back to my title here in my, mm -hmm. my title. God commanded his love towards you. God commanded Think about the God of the universe, the creator of all things. He commanded love. Oh, yeah. Now, we know that the person of love is Jesus Christ. He sent Jesus. He commanded him. He made an obvious step toward humanity and said, look, if I can't get to you through the law, then I'm going to get through to, to, to my son, the person of love. And I'm commanding love upon you. It's the same thing as him commanding his light to shine upon you. He commanded the love of his son and it's shown in your heart. Pastor, some people have got it. Some people are giving it and some people are yet to get it. But I just have confidence that God's able to handle creation. Oh, amen. You know, the Bible says that God is love. First John 4, 8. God is love. This is, God is who love. he is. So now, in light of the revelation of that New Testament scripture, when you begin to uh, then look through that filter, that, that scripture into the Old Testament, you must look at uh, and perceive what uh, the Bible con uh, communicates to us through that <laughs> belief, through that scripture, through that filter. <laughs> That God is love. Now, one of the things that we should be able to see is that relayed, relayed out and communicated out in the scriptures, both Old and New Testament. And mm -hmm. we should be able to see that demonstrated in our lives. So the first thing that we need to understand here is that when he says in 1 John 4 that God is love, it is the Greek word agape, which means a giving affectionate love. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing we need to get a hold of is that that our father, our God, is a giving affectionate love or a giving affectionate father he gives affectionately he gives lovingly so one of the things that you can understand about love is that you can see it you can know it by the type of action it prompts or initiates so then we read in john 3 16 the very, very, the very uh, uh the, the, the very um well-known scripture verse that god so loved the world that he is only begotten that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life you see God loves. i'm getting some back feed not me yeah you know my long guy showed up he's outside my window oh okay got it all right so god so loved us right that he gave that's what love does love 
always gives. Now think about yes. uh, the reciprocal of that. Sin. What does sin do? Sin mm -hmm. always takes. So you can know what God is or who God is or what love is or who love is mm -hmm. if it's mm -hmm. giving. You also know what sin is if it's taking. So you can know when someone's walking or acting in love towards you if they're constantly giving or if they're in sin and they're not in love, if they're always pulling or demanding or taking. Sin separates, sin takes. God or love gives. Mm -hmm. So God is always giving what he is to you. He's always giving love. He's never taking. He's always giving life because that's who he is. He's never giving death. He's, all, I mean, think about it. Is God sickness or disease? No. He's healthy. He's strong. He's healthy. So he's always giving that. Whether you and I receive it or not is up to us. Are we going to be in sin and reject it? Or are we going to be in love and accept it? Amen. He's always the giver. And that's what love does. It always gives. Now, for our friends out there who are having issues in areas of their life, they're having issues with this um, this uh, teaching, they, 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 they think it's heresy. Uh, again, the Bible very clearly states, by grace, you and I are saved. Mm -hmm. Period. Now, it does say through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. But we got to establish this. It's by grace you and I are saved. It's not of any work that you and I have done. That word saved there is the Greek word sozo, which means healed. It means delivered. It means protected. Mm -hmm. I mean, it covers the whole spectrum of life. By grace, by by what Jesus did, because love gave his life so you could have his life. That's the grace that saved you. It already did it. Now, you receive that grace through faith, not of works. He said through faith. Now, we also know that James says faith without works is dead. But it all starts in with what you believe. It all starts with faith. You believe that you have been saved, and when you, you believe that you are loved by God, mm -hmm. and then you'll start acting that out. You'll start behaving that way. You'll start having the corresponding action that reflects that with what you believe. You see, when you don't believe that, you're always trying to earn it. But when you do believe it, you're going to walk it out like it's true. That's where, when There's a lot of times when I'm ministering healing, Dr. Bill. That when you can get that message across that God has loved you, God has already given you his life. He has given you your healing. When people begin to contact that, connect with that, to know that he freely gives and he doesn't hold back. He doesn't, like James says, when, if you lack anything, ask God who gives liberally. That's what love does. Love always gives. He doesn't hold back. When they, when they begin to connect with that, concept that perception of their mm -hmm. father in their heart now hallelujah they begin to reflect that in their behavior they begin to reflect reflect that in their attitude and they begin to walk it out and they begin to see the manifestation of that love that health that provision that protection in their life and they start seeing miracles take place they're not trying to get it they already just receive what love mm -hmm. has given glory to mm -hmm. god amen Amen. Yeah, we could just go on forever on this, couldn't we? Hallelujah. Now, now, let me interject something, Pastor. If we've been, by grace, we have been saved, and saved is the Greek word sozo, and it encompasses everything who God is, then here's a, the reverse of that. Is it possible to fall from grace? Is it possible to fall from my interaction with everything that God is? Think about this. Uh, the Apostle Paul addresses this subject of falling from grace. He says if certain things happen, you aren't falling from grace. But now the, the Greek uh, phraseology there in that verse tells me that falling from grace is, can simply be a momentary lapse in time. In other words, God does not withdraw from you, but you, as fast as you blew it, you can get back up. Now, we have an issue today. Uh, that and and this may interact with with our topic or, or not, but we have an issue today that says uh, if you sin or if you mess up, you need to repent. But now the religious uh, worldly idea 
of sin or repentance is that I got to cry a bucket full of tears and, and so on. Repent is the Greek word metanoia, and there's two words, but they basically mean the same thing, and that's to change your mind, change the way you think. So think about this. Uh, do if, if we have a problem with going to our father and say, Daddy, I blew it, then we really have a pride issue. And, and, you know, I feel comfortable. I feel no condemnation going to God and say, wow, Father, I got angry. I blew it. I stomped my foot. I whatever. And, you know, all God does is, is he reaffirms so-so. He refer, reaffirms that everything I am to you is still who I am to you. I haven't changed my mind about you. My relationship with you does not change. Uh, just because you got a momentary skewed view of who I am. I'm so grateful that people can have an understanding of the unconditional love of God, even though it might be one of the most difficult concepts to embrace today. Amen. And, you know, the whole idea of falling from grace, you know, it's it's been entrenched in our conversations, and that has been a, a question that we've tried to answer. You know, you go back and forth between different views. And as we are talking, as you were talking Dr. Bill, I just, you know, was answering, the, asked the Lord, I said, how do you want me to respond from this? <laughs> and, I, I, you know, I, I very clearly heard him say something, you know, th this is so simple. Listen, grace has saved us, period. For by mm. grace, you are saved. So it's not a question of whether or not the human race has been saved. It's already done. We're saved. Now, can we reject that salvation? Sure, we can, can't we? We're not falling from grace. Grace is still there. We're rejecting it. Now, can a person who has accepted and believed and put his faith in Jesus ever come to a place in their heart where they're going to reject Jesus again? It's very hard, very hard to do. But yeah, it can happen because you are created in the image and likeness of God. You can choose death or you can choose life. But you're not falling from grace because grace has already saved you. See, so you can never earn it. You can never earn it. But you 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 choose to believe it. Hallelujah. And uh, you can become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You can listen. The, the prophet of old said, I'm going to God said, I'm going to put a new heart in you. And then I'm going to put a new spirit in you. Glory to God. And that new heart has to choose to think God's thoughts, choose to believe that who Jesus is and that he died on that cross for you. And that new heart also can choose to reject what Christ has done, but it does not negate what God has successfully given us through Jesus Christ. Love has given us an eternal salvation. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, there's a passage that you and I are both familiar with in 1 John four, seven and eight, but also in verse nine and 10. And the, the, the you know, I, I try to not pay so much attention to the, uh, the titles of these passages, because I know that the Bible printers and, and translators interject those things. But uh, in this particular case, it bears out to be true. And it's, it, it is titled knowing God through love. So the only way to really know God uh, for, for example, he says, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He that does not know uh, uh, God, uh, he that does not love does not know God, for God is love. Here's the thing. You can have gone to a church meeting, a religious meeting, a worship, an uh, open air or, or an indoors meeting, and you could have heard someone say, if you want to receive Jesus, you know, say these words or just accept him in your heart or whatever. And you may have said, Jesus, I surrender my life to you, but you really didn't accept that he loves you unconditionally. It's simply because your understanding of him really was not clear. And so that doesn't mean that you don't love God. It, it really, it, it really is just, you know, I got some problems with my own understanding. And so I put God in the box that I think God belongs in because this is how I feel about the situation. And I got a dad that didn't love me and a mom that didn't love me and grandparents and aunts and uncles. And so that's my view of love. But listen, folks, uh, I deal with this a lot, Pastor, and I know you do. Uh, out of 45 plus years of ministry, 40 of those were pastoring roughly. And uh, I heard this so much. 
well, my pastor mistreated me or didn't love me right. So I'm not going to ever attend church again. Uh, I'm never going to pray again. I'm never going to read my Bible again. What happened in that situation? Did God's view change or did just some misunderstanding occur? God didn't change. That's right. God stayed the same. You know, that's why Jesus said in Luke chapter four, verse 18, I think you just, you're just touching on something that's so, um, so prevalent and it's, it's, it's a major issue in the church today. And we didn't mm -hmm. understand what Jesus was saying in Luke four eighteen, where he said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel, but he also sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To have a broken heart is, is to have the wrong, you, you have wrong thoughts, you have wrong beliefs, mm -hmm. um, you have, you have uh, 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 ideas and perceptions in your heart um, uh, that are skewed and, and that are broken. And, and there's other thoughts and beliefs in your heart that, that aren't right. And they're literally, that's what sin is. It's, the Bible says whatever, if, whatever is not as of faith is sin. And that's what's separating you from our father. And, you know, in growing up in our culture, you know, the opportunity um, to have a, a mis uh, uh, the wrong perception of God because of broken homes because of father issues is um, a widespread pr problem. Uh, yes. One of the things that we see in the last book of the Old Testament is that the prophet said, in the last days, I will turn the hearts of the father. Now he said hearts there, the hearts of the fathers to their children, and then the hearts of the children to their fathers. And that is what is actually taking pl place uh, it, it, right now in our time. There is a move to restore the father's heart, the father's perception mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the family, the father's love in the family. God is 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 doing everything he can right now to touch the father's hearts, uh, uh, the natural father's uh, uh, heart in the world right now to mm -hmm. heal them so that they can begin presenting and representing who he is to their children. See, the hardest thing in the world is for a child who has a perception of an abusive uh, absentee father mm -hmm. to then all of a sudden now start calling God as father. And uh, over and over and over again, a lot of the issues that I deal with uh, how, in this ministry is seeing how these broken hearts have been affected. Um, we've had father issue and mother issues. I'll always joke about this. And when I, when I was, uh, uh, pioneered, started pioneering the church right here in Austin, Minnesota. We used to have revival services all the time. We had healing school. Things were going great. Things were popping. And as soon as we began to pioneer the church, all of a sudden I started dealing with issues that I'm like, what is going on here? And I turned to my pastor and I said, uh, Pastor Dave, what's going on? And he chuckled a little bit. He goes, well, you're starting to deal with their father issues. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, you start seeing that as pastors and authority figures where people they, 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 they have these perceptions, these hearts that have been broken because of some goofy things that have taken place, some belief systems that they have formed in their heart. And we have this we have this hard time then perceiving God as loving us unconditional. And there's a lot of folks in the church that have grown up in this performance based Christianity. And um, uh, we don't have to perform for God. We don't have to get him to do something. That's what religion does. Religion is always trying to get God to do something. The good news is, is that God has already loved you because he is love and he's already done something. Glory to God. He blots out your transgressions. He doesn't remember them. The blood of Jesus it. has been shed. Hallelujah. You can come back home. Hallelujah. And just experience. And listen, listen, he's not going to punish you. He doesn't send people to hell. They it's listen. If we reject his goodness, his love, we said this earlier in our phone call today, Dr. Bill, and that was that it's through the goodness of God that that God can lead us to repentance. It's not through his punishment. It's not through his sure. anger. It's through his goodness. God is good. He's so good. And it doesn't matter how far off we are in darkness. He is remaining the same. He's in that place of unconditional love saying, come home. I'm right here. I'm right where I, where you left me, son. I'm right here, daughter. I haven't left mm -hmm. you. I'm right here with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I love you unconditionally. Doesn't matter what you did. Doesn't matter how you disobeyed. Doesn't matter how you rebelled. If you just turn towards me, just repent. Come back home. I'm right here. I accept you. I accept you. Uh, and you know what? You can turn from that behavior. You can turn from that sin. You can turn from that bondage in a blink of an eye. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've seen it. I've seen it so many times. People who've been addicted to drugs for 30 some years turn in a moment's note in a blink of an eye and just receive 
their miracle, their, their freedom that love always gives. Amen. Yes. And, and, you know, folks, while you're hearing this heart wrenching word tonight, just understand that uh, one of my brothers tonight, uh, Apostle Emil Alston, uh, quoted, uh, I think it's first uh, John 4, 17. Uh, anyways, where that says perfect love casts out fear. You know, for years, we all kind of got caught in that loop of of trying to uh, perfect our love so that we could get rid of fear in us and fear in others and show them how. But, you know, that scripture was never talking about our perfect love. That scripture was always talking about God's perfect love. Amen. It's God's perfect love. It's the revelation you get of God's perfect love that casts all fear. And I love what the, um, uh, I think it's the, the Living Bible says that uh, perfect love, that and, and the sister just quoted it, that fear has torment. And, and, he, he, he describes it as that that torment and that fear is, is that that we're afraid of what this great God might do to us when we mess up. You know what God wants to do to you? Every, everyone listening tonight, if you're struggling with this message, what God wants to do with you when you mess up is he just wants to, in, in, in the best way that he can, the best way that you understand, put his arms around you and hold you tight and love on you. Tell you that everything's going to be all right telling you that I haven't left you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And God just wants you to find reassurance in that a hope in, you know, someone told me one time there was some disastrous thing and they said, I just have to believe in this because this is all the hope I've got. Let me, let me just say this to you. I have to believe in the love of my father because that's the hope that I have, that what he's told me is the truth and that he really, 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 really loves me. That's yeah. my ace in the hope. Amen. You know, we have to get rid of the perception that God takes things from us. We have to get rid of the perception that God withholds things yeah. from us or withholds his goodness from us. The Bible says that God has given us already, already, come on, already given us all things mm -hmm. that pertain unto life and godliness. Ephesians 1, 3 says that God has already blessed us with all or every spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's not a taker. He's a giver. The Bible says that he gives upon approach that we are to believe, you know, you know, in Hebrews, the Bible says that we are to believe that he is now watch this and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We have to push past our sin, push past, push past the things that are blocking us from receiving what he is freely given to us now Amen. in John. I don't know how much time we got left here, uh, Dr. Uh, Bill. It's the what time we, that you have that we have left. Okay. Well, um, I would like to just take a few moments here in John chapter 15 and just look at something that how I used to read it. And I just didn't, you know, and I believe that a lot of folks re read this passage of scripture through the perception that, you know, God will get you for that. Or here it is. See this right here. It's saying that that God takes things away. And uh, and Jesus was kind of ministering along these lines. And he said in, in verse one, he says, I am the true vine. My father is the husbandman. Now, he says, every branch in me that bears not fruit. Now, in the English translation, we read this. He taketh away. Now, I used to read that and say, now, it seems to me like he's taking us away and, and casting us out. And I'll just finish reading this chapter, uh, this verse here. It says, in every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. In every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. He goes, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. If you jump down to verse 6, it says, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Now, for years, I know a lot of folks, too, is, for years I read this and I was like, this sounds like that God's taking you away and casting you out because you're not being that good Christian that's bearing fruit. And that's, uh, again, the way that the King James translation and a lot of English translations translated the scripture. And so as I was I began meditating on this for uh, you know a couple of years ago. The Lord said, I want you to spend 
every day just meditating on John chapter 15. I would read it in my prayer time when I would come before him and spend time just talking with him. He says, now I want you to go over to John 15. And I would do it every day, every day. Just read John chapter 15 over and over and over again. And I'm still doing it today. Not every day, but just um, often. And uh, one time here, not too long ago, I was just reading on the words purges there. And, and, I, and I saw that the word purge there means to cut or it means to cleanse, but it means to cut out. And so that was the first step in realizing that what the love of the father is. What now, Listen, God is love. The father is love. So what he does is he when he sees something in your heart that is hindering you from experiencing the fruit of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace. I mean, when, when he sees that the that you're not experiencing these things and he sees the thing that's that's hindering you from experiencing it and walking in love and joy and peace, he cuts it out. That's what the word purge means. He wants to cleanse it from you. Jesus said, you are now clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. That's what the word of God does. It begins to cleanse us so that we can experience what he freely gives us. And so I started getting that. And, and, you know, that's what Hebrews chapter four, verse 12 says. Dr. Bill says, for the word of God is alive and powerful. And here it is sharper than any two edged sword, piercing, even dividing asunder the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow. And as a dis and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. See, so yeah. God's word is to go. It cuts to the heart, literally, and it begins to cleanse out these things. But here just the, uh, a few days ago, I, I was meditating on this and the Lord said, go look up that word taketh in the Greek concordance. So I did. And this was absolutely liberating for me. And I just I just have not been able to share this enough this past month. And that was that word taketh does not mean that he takes away. The word taketh there literally means to lift up, to bear, to carry. Oh, glory to God. Listen, if you would, uh, okay, this is this. Now, this begins to confirm what other scriptures say about our Father. I mean, in Isaiah 53, 3, 4, and 5, it says that he bore our, our sins and carried our diseases and carried our pains. I mean, he lifts us up and he carries us when we are uh, when we are powerless to do it. He wants to lift you and I up out of that darkness. Glory to God. Yeah. And place us in this place in Jesus Christ where we can begin to experience his intense love for us. When you are in that pit, hallelujah, he lifts lifts you up. That's what the book of Psalms says. Glory to God. He lifts you up out of that pit so that you won't spend eternity in hell. Glory to God. He bears you. Hallelujah. He carries you and I. That's what that means. And when you go on down to verse six, notice it didn't say that he casts us away. No, that's what men want to do. Wicked and evil men who have the wrong perception of a loving God. They're the ones that want the earth to swallow you up. They're the ones that want to cut you out. They're the ones that want to bring the, ju the judgment and the condemnation. That's what Satan does. John 10, 10, the thief comes but for to steal, kill and destroy. But what did God come to do? What did Jesus come to do? He came to love you and to give you life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor, uh, I, I just uh, I, I just am so thankful that after Jesus said those things that he went on to a cross and yeah. he, he died and he was buried. He rose again and he lives. He lives in us. And I'm so thankful that he lifted us up. He 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 bore everything that we could have possibly faced in life. He carried us. And because of our believing in his finished work, that thing is still uh, it's like residual payments of an insurance policy. When an insurance agent sells a policy, they get residual payments from that. The reality is, is that we're receiving still receiving the residual benefits of what Jesus did in our lives today. So as we uh, uh, in today's uh, broadcast, Pastor, uh, if if you want to pray for the, the folks or you have a word for someone, I know you've got to get to a service. Um, so we're cutting you at about five minutes. but uh, okay. Just just uh, and I know you've been speaking words to people, but if you have something specific you'd like to 
to uh, uh, give, go ahead and do that. That's totally fine. Sure. Well, I'll definitely uh, begin praying. Father, we just thank you for all those that are in the sound of our voice. And Lord, I thank you that, uh, that you love us unconditionally. And because of that unconditional love, you sent Jesus to pay the price for our sin, to become sin with our sin, with our unbelief. And you raised him up from the dead. You didn't leave him there in hell. And you made him and gave him a name above every name. And you gave him that place. Hallelujah. At the right hand side. And you gave us the opportunity. Now you raised us up according to Ephesians chapter 2. And you made us sit together now because of your intense love in that heavenly place. In Christ Jesus, you made us sit together with him. Mm -hmm. You commanded your love to us. Mm -hmm. And you placed us together. You bound us together with you. Oh, thank you, Lord, for not allowing our sin to continually, eternally separate us from you. But for sending Jesus to bring us back home. Hallelujah, Father, I thank you that you are reaching out right now to that dear woman. For that dear woman, that dear daughter of God that has been struggling with the condemnation and the unworthiness. The unworthiness, the, the feelings of, of, of rejection, the overwhelming rejection you, or never being good enough in her family. Never being good enough in her father's eyes. Never being good enough to, in her mother's eyes. Oh, Lord, she's good enough in your eye. You said that she's the apple of your eye. Lord, that she don't have to perform for you, but you're there right now. Father, I pray that you just, that she, oh, yeah, you're right there. Your arms of love are right there. You're wooing her, just drawing her into your bosom right now. Father, I pray that you strengthen her inner man to experience your loving embrace right now. You may be thinking, I'm not good enough. I'm not, I'm not good enough. I'm, I'm so unworthy. I'm unclean. But he's saying, no, no, I call you clean, daughter. I call you clean. The blood of Jesus has cleansed you. The blood of Jesus has purchased you. You are, you are so worthy. You are his precious daughter. Oh, you're precious. You're precious. There's, you're precious. Come on. You're precious. Yes. Yes. You're precious. You're precious. You're precious. And that infirmity in your flesh, that, that the power of that that has been holding on is being broken right now. It's being broken right now because he's pouring out his love on you. He's pouring out his love. He hasn't abandoned you. He hasn't left you. He hasn't abandoned you. No, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, no, no. He's got you by your right hand. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've seen where he lifted Peter up out of those ra that raging water. He lifted Peter up out of that storm. He's lifting you up. He's lifting you up out of that storm. He's got you in his bosom right now. He's got you in his bosom, just like John. Laid his head on the bosom of Jesus. You can rest. Safety. Yeah, he's a safe place. He's the safe place. He says, I'm safe. I'm safe. Just rest there. You can enter into that rest. You just tell, you just, you can just, oh, glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The father says, just tell Satan to take a flying leap. You are loved. He's got you. He's got you. He's got you. And that love is just cleansing you right now. That love is just healing you right now. There's something out there just, you're feeling a warmth in your body. You're feeling a warmth all around you. That's the Father. That's his love for you. Oh, the devil, don't let the devil bring up your past. Mm -mm. Jesus paid for that. The Father's already seen ahead into your future. This is your divine appointment. This is your divine time. He knew you'd be watching today. He knew that you'd be a part of this. And this is for you right now. See, he's, he loves you so much. He's breaking into your reality right now. Mm -hmm. to tell you that you are valuable that you, he's got you he's watching you he has his eye on you with love oh you're so important to him and yes yep yep yeah yeah you do have a divine destiny yep yeah yes you are called yes you are called yes you are called no no your sin doesn't disqualify you i qualify you mm -hmm. what the devil disqualifies i qualify says the lord i've qualified you for this time and this hour, you're marked, you're loved, and my gifts and calls are, are not without repentance. Just choose me. Choose me. Choose it now. And I'll take you where 
you've dreamed on going. I'll take you there. You've saw it. You've dreamt it. But I'm the one that will do it with you. I'll take you there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We want to thank everyone for watching tonight and for those who are going to see this video after the fact. Uh, we just pray and we believe that the message, the, let, let me just say it this way, that our attempt at sharing and re revealing the Father's heart to you, uh, we just hope that you have latched on to something, one word, one phrase, uh, an interpretation of one scripture that all of a sudden changed your world so that you can begin to see God in a whole new light. God loves you because he is love. God has your back, whether you feel like it or not. God cares about you even on those days that you feel like no one cares. God loves you and he loves you no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done. God has great things in store for you that have come through the finished work of Jesus. He's made you holy. He's made you righteous. He's made you love. He's made you accepted in the beloved. And you didn't do anything about that. It was provoked by the love of God through his son, Jesus Christ. And now you get to say yes to Jesus and receive the benefits. You get to lap up all the good stuff, as they say. And so we just pray for you. We want to thank you tonight so much for watching. Pastor Rory, thank you for being on with me tonight at a, at a moment's notice. And uh, I appreciate it so much. Amen. And I have one, I have one yes. more word I keep hearing from the Father, and I just feel yes. like I need to say it. If that's all Please. right, Dr. Blue. Please. Mama, I'm telling you right now, the, the Father is saying, you, you, I'm I will restore your family. You don't have to petition me. You don't have to. Uh, beg me no 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 you come to me and rest in me he says as long as you continue to turn and and keep your eyes on me and focus in on me and rest in me i'll take care of it i take care of it did i not say that i would be your real reward i am restoring your family amen Hallelujah. amen 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 Pastor Roy has got to get to a church service. Uh, yep. Listen, uh, in the morning, uh, Pastor Kyle Butler from uh, New Jersey is going to be with me on uh, on Friday morning conversations with Dr. Bill. And in just a few weeks, Pastor Rory is going to be back with me on Friday mornings. We're going to be doing healing school for a few weeks. So a lot of good things coming up. Thank you for being patient with us while we're getting back on track after the move. God bless you. Have a great evening. And we will see you in the morning. God bless you, everyone. Bye-bye. God bless. Hallelujah.